Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. A couple of headlines caught my attention earlier and I wanted to share. Sunday crypto market gainers, HOT, which is Holochain, sends Matic, Theta, and BTT. The only one that I was concerned with is Holo. Let's scroll down and just go through really quick and see what it says because I really only wanted to show the charts. The top 15 cryptocurrencies, we do discuss XRP and Ripple, which is the number three, and we have Stellar and XLM running in 12th place. And as we scroll down into the best performer, the number one spot is hot. No pun intended, a holo chain. And it has been performing surprisingly well for the past like 30 days. So that's been very exciting. That's it. All I really want to share from this article. Obviously, the number one and number 12 spot being XRP and XLM. And then number one spot for best performer is HOT or Holochain at 12.44%. Another article with Jed McCaleb, the headline stating, I'm still betting on blockchain to improve economic opportunity. Uh, Jed McCaleb is the co-founder and chief architect of the Stellar Development Foundation, an open network that connects the world's financial infrastructure. And he previously had this similar uh, success with Ripple, doing with XRP. Now he's moved on to Stellar XLM. So you can see why it's, you know, basically, if you like one, it's hard not to like the other, especially now knowing for a lot of new people that they're not competition as we continue to state on this channel. Going back into the article, Jeb is discussing when I started working in this industry, I was motivated by the idea that I could help build something to tangibly make people's lives better. I could build a network that connected financial systems in a way that would be useful for the world. Because despite the advancements that technology and the internet have brought us, the global payment landscape, it hasn't kept pace. At its best, today's system is slow, cumbersome, and fraught with fees. At its worst, it leaves millions of people marginalized. A decentralized system could be a way to empower people with greater access to financial services that are fast and affordable. And Jed McCaleb is a speaker at Consensus Distributed Coin Desk's free virtual convention running May 11th through 15th. And as we know, um, May 11th is actually the scheduled Bitcoin halving. So a lot of excitement is going to be going on for this week. We've also shared this consensus um, little convention that's going on on our Twitter page as well. Back into the article, I was clear eyed that the kind of systemic change I envisioned would take time. Challenging the existing financial providers to see the value in connecting to decentralized infrastructure educating policymakers and regulators about the benefits of this new technology and then actually building a network with businesses that demonstrate valuable network effects. And it's a monumental challenge. Today we're in an, an important moment for this history or for this industry, for this history too. While China launches a national blockchain platform, others in the world are slowly tapping into the potential this technology has to offer. But the last few weeks and months have acutely demonstrated how useful and arguably necessary this technology is. Holes in the system have been visibly exposed as people suddenly find themselves urgently needing to send money or financial support to family and friends all over the world. Even governments like in the United States realize that they lack the infrastructure to quickly issue payments to millions of citizens in need, and is a reminder that the opportunity for blockchains to create a better, more efficient system is worth fighting for. And I've shared many video on the uh, U.S. President Donald Trump uh, speeches that he had been giving um, the past month or so, when he states, um, basically in alignment with Brad Garlinghouse, stating the old antiquated 40-year-old system 
and he would like to use the new system um, to directly send payments like an instant and immediate uh, to the U.S. citizens to give them stimulus funds. So I believe I've done a little research. Actually, I've done a lot of research, but getting to the point in regards directly to this, and it seems they're getting ready to do another stimulus. The numbers are all over the place, but the most current, they're talking like $2,000 a month for the next 12 months for adults who are paying taxes and are um, already in the IRS system. They're doing direct deposits for those who have sent their bank account information to receive direct deposits and others are just receiving checks. But it seems like with the new system, there's a possibility um, that they're going to begin using the new system for the second round of stimulus. So we'll see where this plays out over time. And it's very exciting either way. Back into the article, like the internet democratized access to information, I believe this technology should democratize access to the financial system. As I prepare to take the virtual stage at Consensus, distributed to talk about the evolution of cryptocurrencies, I thought about the fact that while a lot has changed in the decade, I've worked on this technology, the core ideas that make this technology compelling remain constant. Here's why I think blockchains are still the answer to how we build a more dependable, accessible, and connected world. Headline, it promotes interoperability and inclusion and states, a blockchain allows seemingly disparate systems to connect even though they don't have a formal relationship with each other. While this might not sound very exciting, the socioeconomic impact is enormous because this connection may or means a world of over 180 plus different monetary systems could work together on a single platform. And that represents billions of people in the world being able to seamlessly transact and interact. And that's a huge improvement over today's system, which is essentially a patchworked together of the hundreds of different monetary systems. Each has its own unique set of services and connections to the parallel systems outside its borders and all of these disparate banks, money transfer operators, and treasuries combine to make up the entire global financial system as we know it. And just thinking about what he's stating right there, it already sounds just like a complete organized cluster bomb. But imagine a world where you had almost instant access to carry, spend, or send a digital dollar. Interesting choice of words, the digital dollar, as we're uh, expected to receive that directly from Crypto Mom before the end of her term this month, before May or June 1st, before the end of May and before June 1st. That is her goal, as stated by her, that she wants to have the digital dollar complete. And ready for use. A digital yuan, a digital peso, and any currency in your wallet, no matter the geographical location of your bank, blockchain technology enables that speed and access, allowing systems to be interoperable and in connected. When that happens, it creates access, opening the door to financial inclusion for so many who are marginalized today. The next headline was decentralization creates opportunity and into the article as more financial institutions, companies and developers come onto a blockchain network, it creates opportunity by leveraging the benefits of decentralization to create compelling network effects. The total power as a stable, secure, transparent network grows. Stable because the network persists and synchronizes regularly because it is spread over servers and computers all over the world. It doesn't rely on a central server, so a truly decentralized network can't be tuned or turned off. Secure because no one can change the numbers or manipulate the data to their liking. Transparent because everyone can see the ledger and trust the information is correct. And maybe most importantly, unlike a centralized system with a predictable growth curve, which can compromise relationships to users and their data, the decentralized systems can grow organically, permissionlessly, and exponentially. And as investors, I like hearing the word exponentially. It takes time to build network effects as I've witnessed firsthand over years in the industry. But once it takes off, the opportunity will be endless. 
And the next headline is consensus can be sustainable. There are different flavors of the consensus algorithms uh, used to maintain a blockchain. And this means that the speed, cost, and functionality on different blockchain networks varies. I feel strongly that the best way to build an interoperable, decentralized network is through an open source protocol that's sustainable, much like the internet democratized access to information. And I believe this technology should democratize access to the financial system. Open source will let us do that because the network as a protocol isn't driven by profits or shareholders. And importantly, there are consensus protocols like the one we've built for Stellar Network that don't demand huge energy resources to run. The Stellar Consensus Protocol is sustainable using a small amount of energy. And if you've been paying attention for the last year or two, uh, like those of us who have been around for a little bit longer, if you're new, it's, you know, pretty much you can only just listen. But for those of us who have heard the governments around the world, including the U.S. President, Christine Lagarde, and many others state, it will not be Bitcoin, it will not be Ethereum. And the reason being, for example, Bitcoin uses so much energy to mine and to operate and function, much less the slow speed that it uses. In its defense, it has run faster on the XRPL and with Lightning. But overall, as stated, it's very slow and uses an extremely high amount of energy. As they've used the global warming issue to uh, state as reason for its attack, they've stated that XRP, Ripple, and Stellar, I should say, are the most um, green and most efficient and lowest energy of all of the digital assets. So you can see again, if you're an investor in XRP XLM, that that's a massive benefit being the most green when the world is going as far as the government level is concerned on an attack against global warming. And they've already categorized Bitcoin into that uh, category. Okay, let's finish off this article that states when blockchain development is led in this way, it enables even greater functionality on a network. We can build it in a way that's best for the network and for users. That means we can focus on the improvements needed for today's financial system to make it more equitable and accessible, like making transfers like seconds, take seconds, I should say, rather than days and cost fractions of a cent rather than ranging from a few to hundreds of dollars. I've devoted a better part of a decade to building blockchain technology while we've made tremendous progress as we face today's crises. It's clear we still have a ways to go. Now more than ever, I am motivated by the utility and power of blockchains. For me and our work at the SDF Stellar Development Foundation, blockchains are still the answer to a better, more equitable financial system. And as he states also back um, into the uh, timeline of processing, settling, and sending currencies, you know, whatever the distance, if I'm standing next to you versus if I'm standing literally on the opposite side of the world, opposing from where we are, it's still going to take the same timeline. You know, the uh, three to five seconds is the stated timeline for sending uh, and settlement uh, to process uh, payments and remittance with both Stellar and with uh, Ripple, XRP, and XLM. So if you're familiar with sending money to your loved ones, there are ways that you can send, but the actual settlement is still taking three to five days, even on the banking side, no matter how long it takes to get it on the opposite side and receive and be used by your friends and family. But the typical... You know, what most people are used to is they send a check, you receive the check, you probably get a percentage of the check, and then the total settlement is cleared in two to three days. But now with the new system, you're going to be in literal seconds versus days. So instead of three to five days, we're going to cut it down to three to five seconds. Basically, like you're familiar with receiving your email and your text messaging. For those of who's, who understand this, you've been here for a while, it's become common knowledge and understanding with perfect clarity of 
this new system. But for the new people, it can be very exciting and overwhelming, like imagining the old school. If you're older, most likely if you're over 40 years old, you understand the traditional USPS for the United States. Whatever your country is, the Postal Service, the regular, put a stamp on it, write your name and address, this receiver's name and address, and send it and be delivered by a courier and carrier is the traditional way. So to see the emails come in and text messaging come in where you're literally talking in seconds instead of writing those letters or paying those bills, now we match that up with receiving currency and sending currency. It only makes sense in the world of technology that we live in today. I saw this article also. Um, the thought that I wanted was behind of sharing this article was really just the headline. Ripple co-founder Jed McCaleb has sold over $175 million worth of XRP since early 2016. Sharing the thought that I have behind that, there are a lot of you know, whether it's naivete, whether it's lack of knowledge, lack of research, lack of understanding the investment that people are in, forgetting the other options around them, sometimes they get blinded by a favorite, like a football team or like a car brand or a clothing brand. People have their favorites, that's great. But understanding the whole industry of itself and what we're invested in and involved in and discussing it's a little bit deeper and a little more amazing in my uh, perspective than just being stuck and in, blinded into one. Even if your one will be successful, it's still great to understand how it's connecting to others around it. Having said that, many people have stated, you know, how is Stellar going to succeed? I mean, they don't understand that many of the partnerships they have are absolutely massive within themselves, much less the, mo the many partnerships that they have, but they are behind the scene and they are also a nonprofit, which changes everything. Even down to the recent um, Akon, the entertainer creating a country, or, or not a country, but he's creating a currency in the country of Kenya. And it's the A coin running exclusively on Stellar. But going into that, he's not broke. The company has no issues and concerns of finance. And as we go into this, you're going to see even more so the reason I want to share this article. Ripple co-founder Jed McCaleb had sold over 175 million USD worth of XRP since early 2016, according to research by The Block. And 175 million USD is not something small or simple to, to scuff at or laugh at. That is pretty significantly um, major on a success level. Next article is, or the next paragraph in terms of XRP units, McCaleb has offloaded over 819 million XRPs. When you think of your investment or our investments, 819 million is extremely high amount. But McCaleb was awarded nine billion with a capital B billion XRPs for co-founding OpenCoin, which later became Ripple. So just think he sold less than one billion total and still has about eight billion remaining. He has no concerns with finance. And if you were the CEO or the founder of a company that's running on your dream, so to speak, you're going to assure that it succeeds if you have the capital and finance to make that dream become a reality. Quick update for those of you who are new. It began as OpenCoin and even the idea of Ripple itself began back in 2004. But I digress from that. We'll keep it current with what most people understand with OpenCoin, which became Ripple. The currency was called Ripple's and that's why a lot of us who have been around for, you know, five plus years, Ripple's was XRP, which is today ODL. 
The currency, the company name actually, has changed a few times and so has the currency. That's really all I wanted to get into with that. Alright guys, I'm going to leave you with a final thought. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. This is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. We'll catch you in the next one.